Isaac Asimov is one of, if not the most prolific science fiction writers of all time. So the Foundation Trilogy, while one of his most famous creations, is really just a drop in the bucket compared to the vast body of work that he has created. In fact, while the Foundation Trilogy is the work that was awarded to Hugo over Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, he's more commonly known for stories about robots. Star Trek's inclusion of Data as having a positronic brain specifically name-dropped Asimov, despite the fact that Data lacked the most fundamental aspect of being an Asimov-style robot, the Three Laws of Robotics, which I had mentioned previously. Robotics, in fact, was a word that was coined by Asimov himself. The Three Laws are not literal program instructions, but fundamental avenues of behavior imposed upon a robot. But in English, they are presented as 1. A robot may not harm a human or allow a human being to come to harm. 2. A robot must obey all instructions given by a human unless it conflicts with the first law. 3. A robot must preserve its own existence unless it conflicts with the first two laws. Data of Star Trek clearly does not possess that, as he has deliberately disobeyed orders from a superior in one instance, unification, and in order to preserve his own existence, the measure of a man, in another. However, Data has his ethical program, his conscience as he calls it, which could be considered the basis of the three laws. While the intent of them was to be a failsafe for humanity, and thus a reason not to fear robots, they also serve a fundamental purpose. It ensures that even the most primitive robot has ethics. A simple robot is a robot that knows what's right and what's wrong, much like a child might, while an advanced model could actually reflect upon the nature of right and wrong with the laws serving as a foundation, though obviously incapable of dismissing them based upon consideration. If you wonder why I'm going on about robots, it's for two reasons, one of which I'll get into now, the other when I get to Foundation's Edge. Asimov wrote a number of short stories around his robot ideas set in the near future, often featuring Dr. Susan Calvin. He also produced two novels set in a more distant future that featured Elijah Bailey as a detective who worked with a human-looking robot, The Caves of Steel and The Naked Sun. Aside of the existence of the three laws, there was nothing explicitly connecting these two periods together. The Bailey novels were set in a time when Earth was a second-class planet in the eyes of the dominant spacers, descendants of humans who had journeyed to the stars with their robots and now imposed their will upon the Earth. The spacers still make use of their robots and live very long lives free from disease, while the humans on Earth live in huge domed metropolises and resent robots. Asimov also wrote three novels set in a galactic empire, The Currents of Space, The Stars Like Dust, and Pebble in the Sky, the last one actually being his very first novel. These aren't linked by anything other than the presence of said galactic empire, although reinforcing the science fiction analog of the Roman Empire, much like in Foundation. Pebble in the Sky, for instance, is often compared to the first Jewish rebellion in the first century AD, though obviously with fewer spaceships. Nevertheless, while Earth is unsuccessful in its revolution, it is obviously known and part of the Empire. And, of course, there's the Foundation Trilogy, covered so far in the series, and since originally discussed, has had a welcome change of its adaptation. No longer being brought to the big screen by Roland Emmerich, it'll be brought to television on HBO by Jonathan Nolan. These combined are likewise a small part of all that Asimov has written, but they are the work that he is most famous for. But Foundation was a sticking point. It was an incomplete story. As I said in the previous part, Dr. Calvin's era ends with the knowledge that robot brains aiding in administrating the planet are in reality actually running the planet. But because of the laws of robotics and the sense of ethics it gives them, they ran it solely for the benefit of the human race, to maximize the gain for everyone even if it meant bringing misfortune to a small few whose behavior would ultimately have done harm in one way or another. The Bailey novels were two connected novels, but ultimately just intriguing detective stories rather than any kind of development. And as I said, the so-called Empire novels were mere stories set in this era which included an Earth. But the Foundation trilogy was about the rise of a new galactic empire in the wake of the previous one's collapse, a thousand-year period, a period that was incomplete. Naturally, such a popular work demanded that the story be taken to its conclusion, yet Asimov allowed decade after decade to pass without revisiting the world of Foundation. 
It was only because of fan pressure and an offer from the publisher that Asimov said was simply too large for him to turn down that compelled him to return to the series with the fourth novel, Foundation's Edge, which I'll look at in greater detail later on. However, Foundation's Edge didn't just continue the tale of the Foundation. It also kicked off a set of trends for Asimov throughout the rest of his life. Foundation's Edge, published in 1982, involves the search for Earth, which was never mentioned throughout the Foundation trilogy. The closest it gets is near the beginning, when a representative from the Emperor speaks of the origin question, the issue of where humanity first came into existence, and on the list of possibilities is Soul, but even then, no Earth. Foundation's Edge ties Foundation into the Empire era by explicitly making references to the events of Pebble in the Sky to explain why there is no one on Earth anymore. The radioactivity mentioned in that novel rendered the world uninhabitable, and soon it became forgotten. Thus the two periods are stitched together this way. After Foundation's Edge came The Robots of Dawn, a third Elijah Bailey detective novel, which showed an evolution now towards leaving the con confines of dome cities, although this movement is still in its infancy. In this novel, specific mention is made of Dr. Susan Calvin and the events of one of the stories found in iRobot and The Complete Robot. Those two eras are now explicitly tied together as well. Asimov laid the foundation, no pun intended, in Foundation's Edge when robots are mentioned and were told that the more sophisticated they became, the more like humans they became the more they realized that even benevolent rule by robots was contrary to what humanity truly needed, thus explaining how things could be allowed to reach the point seen in the Caves of Steel. Their guardians had relinquished control for humanity's own good. Finally, Robots and Empire was the controversial link between these two incredibly different series. The Foundation books and the Empire books, well, naturally they could fit together. And obviously the robot series and robot novels with their consistent rules would fit together. But tying these two periods together, that had more chance for controversy. But this was something that Asimov wanted to do now. And while Del Rey discouraged him, feeling that the fans would want to keep these series separate, Doubleday encouraged him to follow through on it. Robots and Empire would be the final part of Elijah Bailey's period, although without Bailey himself. It explained why in the future Empire novels that humans lack the space or longevity, freedom from all disease, and most importantly, a complete absence of robots. The spacers were in actuality a dead end, and Bailey's actions would be the impetus for humans of Earth to once again strike out for the stars. But this second wave, the settlers as opposed to the spacers, would do so without robots, and would thrive and form a galactic society while the spacer civilizations would collapse and be forgotten. The novel also offered an alternate explanation for Earth's radioactivity. Rather than being an ancient nuclear war, as originally posited, it is in fact due to deliberate actions in the book that would set these events in motion. And I discuss all of this because when Asimov picks up the story again, the totality of his so-called history of the future is the backdrop of the events in the Foundation series. But more than that, they provide a bit of an explanation to the themes that are on display. But before we get to the fourth volume of the Foundation series, we have to take a very important detour, as it will help shed further light on said volume. So next time, the end of eternity. <laughs>